So what if I told you there is a way to monitor this when Windows, Linux, and OS X flavors which are scattered through the premises or in the cloud? You probably be going like, what's this guy selling here? Well, the answer is nothing because it's free. Hi, my name is Bogdan, and today I'm going to talk a bit about Hubble. But before that, as Christina already mentioned, uh, I've been working with uh, the SOC. Now I'm working as a host intrusion engineer for the past uh, two and a half years in Adobe. So this will be a story in three parts. First, we're going to talk about what is Hubble and how to get it up and running, and then how to use it. So what is Hubble? Hubble is a modular open source security and compliance framework. It's designed for building uh, robust host monitoring capabilities. And it leverages the OS queries capability. It's built on top of Salt Stack. Therefore, at its core, it's written in environment. It was open source by Adobe in early 2000, 2016 at uh, Salt Stack. It's publicly available in Git at github.com slash hubblestack. It's a high performance and low footprint tool, which is, you can run it out of the box, but it's also highly customizable to fully fit your environment and uh, your needs. And as mentioned before, there are multiple components to Hubble, and these are Nova, Nebula, Ulsa, and Quasar. So let's go a bit uh, to each and every one of them. So the first one is Nova. It's Hubble's auditing engine. It's designed to assess the security and compliance of, um, of a system. Basically, you're going to define a baseline and then run a, check, a series of checks against that baseline to see where your host stands. Um, it can be used for CIS compliance as well as for CV scanning and it integrates with owner.com for CVs. And you can schedule it, you can run it as a one-off or you can schedule it to run whenever you want, daily, weekly, whatever. Um, it will tell you basically uh, the name of the check, the name of the, the number of the CIS, a short description of it, whether it passed or failed that, uh, that check. And at the end, you're going to get uh, a compliance report against the series of, of checks you, you have. Um, so yeah, basically with this, you can ensure that all your, your, basically your posts are hardened, or the configurations are the way you want them to be, the packages installed on the, on the system are the ones you want uh, to be. So, uh, let's move into the next module, which is also It's Hubble's real-time file integrity and uh, security events system. Um, it's designed to be lightweight and can uh, notify you of file changes in real time. Um, and a lot of people will say to this, well, my infrastructure is immutable. No one changes it. We only do it to the complete ma management process. I wouldn't be so sure about that, and to this I'm not referring only to the malicious actors as uh, an admin who doesn't follow procedures and make changes on his own can basically induce a lot of operational issues and no one would know about them. Um, this module is also customizable. You can check, I mean, you can point at different directories and exclude the directories you do not want is to look at, as in look at bar log, as bar, but not at bar log, as that will change constantly with uh, Linux logging stuff. Also, you can change the type of attributes, uh, the file attributes you want that to get at. Checksums, hashes, whatever. So, next on the list, it's Nebula. It's Hubble's inside module, and it's trying to query the system. Uh, it heavily ties into OS Query. And for those of you unfamiliar with OS Query, it's a tool which was open sourced by Facebook in 2014, which took a very different approach to host based monitoring. Basically, it reviews your system as if it were a database, and you can query that database with uh, SQL Live and gather a lot of full info out of there, as in processes, uh, configurations, memory, 
all that type of info which is really useful for when an analyst when he is looking for malicious activities. Um, this OS query has a lot of tables which grab the, the information, which are written to all the information grabbed from the system. Um, but you can even write your own to the existing API query. Uh, it's, it can be done in C or in Python. Um, it comes with OS query I, which is an interactive shell where you will run your queries for a sweep or a one time or test. And then you can schedule those queries uh, to OS query D, which is a host uh, monitoring daemon. And with that daemon, you schedule them to run on different intervals. It grabs the info, it logs it, and then you can use it further. The tool is really cool and all, and being it provides is really nice. However, it's a bit of a pain to get everything going in the beginning. But we thought that the cool info is all is worth it, as Nebula basically does all that work from it for you. It comes with a high variety of already existing queries, already scheduled to run on different uh, cadences, and um, also, it uh, ties in nicely with the reporting system, radar, about which we'll talk about next. So, this is basically designed to collect and deliver data for processing. It's the, the glue that ties everything together. It gathers the data from all the previous modules, and it delivers it to your existing blogging infrastructure. From there, you can build alerts, dashboards, correlate stuff, everything you you want to do with it. Um, also, these notifications can be forwarded also to your email or Slack or other team collaboration tools, not just to, to your CM infrastructure. So, um, now let's get to getting Hubbard around. We have all these cool features. How do we get them to, to work? Usually this is the, the the desert part, <laughs> when we're talking about uh, open source tools, most of them need a lot of tinkering before you get everything run the way you you wanted, wanted to. But with Hubble, it's, it's pretty easy. And before I get to, into this more, I want to share a, a short story of how I got to work on this project. Uh, midway through the summer, um, when this project of building an environment and create content for analysts to use was in its infancy. My awesome colleague from India, which helped that uh, process in the beginning, decided to move into a different role. And after a very elaborate uh, decision process, and then eeny, meeny, miny, pop them. <laughs> I was chosen to, uh, to help this process. That was, I was afraid. I was petrified. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> But uh, my colleague from India had more than two years of uh, sysadmin experience. She was awesome at this. She was really good. She was a cloud instructor, really knew what she was doing. I could barely string CLI commands together. Just so you know where I was before I started with this. So it's not fun. <laughs> so yeah, uh, with this out of the way, let's go into installing Kava. So basic, basically on Linux, all you need to do is install git and Python I notify. Uh, then you need to download the latest release from uh, the GitHub page, install it, and then you need to modify the config file, which is located in bin.xc.hubble.com. There you need, you'll have instructions in the config file, you'll see later. Uh, but basically you need to uncomment the scheduler stuff and the returner and give it where you want it to return. Index, token, how you want the, the data to be, to be split. Just make sure you uh, restart the agent whenever you make changes. I told you I wasn't very good at this. This kept me busy today. <laughs> um, so now let's move on to, to, to Windows. And on Windows, you double click. Uh, <laughs> you uh, download the latest release and install it. You get a prompt. It asks again for your uh, returner for your scan info, tokens, index, index server. You prompt, it, prompt them in, and you're going to see data in um, in your scan. 
There is a third version of Hubble, which runs on top of an existing full stack infrastructure and leverages the master and minion agents. And basically, that one can be used to have only one agent and not multiple agents. You kind of only should use it if you have full stack as your existing orchestrator and you want to maximize performance. And I'm not going to go deeper into this, but it's an Easter egg, so I thought I'd mention it. So, yeah, that's it. Now you have a couple of them done. So, from here, you can go out and customize it, clone the Git repo into your own, add existing queries, modify the schedule. Uh, I don't know, modify the, the Nova profiles. Those are in, yeah, just write the checks in there and you're gonna, you're gonna get what you want. Modify the file paths on which you wanna be looking at and, and pulse that. So, yeah, that's, that's basically it. So, now that I've given you um, a short overview of Hubble, let's go a bit to what it is and what it is. It, it is a great addition to every security infrastructure for all the information it provides, and not all the tools provide all this, all this info. It can also help with operational issues, troubleshooting those with the process info it, uh, it provides. And it provides cover from OSs that don't get much love from the security industry, as if they don't send OSs. That's why it was built in the beginning, by, by Facebook. And it can also help with hardening suggestions and um, CVE detection. But what it isn't, as you've all seen, it doesn't cover any of the capabilities of an AV or an ITS system, so you should use it in conjunction with those. And you should also scan with a vulnerability scanner as that thing that the more active search that just matches the packages to vulnerable.com. So, with all that being said, uh, let's move on to the demo. I want to show you some cool stuff. This is me demo. <laughs> um, so, uh, let's look at the Nova data in the, in the terminal. This is basically how you call it, Hubble, and then the module that you're calling Hubble on it. And it runs a one-off scan. You're going to see at the top the percentage, the, the fail checks, the status numbers, and the description. And also the successful one. Basically, this is no in the terminal. For Nebula, you can work with the same as in Hubble, the module which you're calling, Nebula queries, and then you have a, another argument for the how you schedule it. We call the, uh, the hourly queries now. And I have events for the cron tab, which is always there. You're going to see the commands, which are cron, and the, the cron schedule here. You're going to see the cron files, what the, all that, that stuff. And logging history, the process ID, the username, which, uh, which logged in, and it's a user process, so it's still active. You're going to see that process from view 10 if it's not. And you can schedule it with the other arguments which I already have, day or 15 minutes. These are the, this is the way it's by default scale. So let's look a bit at OS query. I'm just going to show a couple of simple queries. Call the shell, and then please give me everything from the, the user's table. If you don't know the tables which are available, you can just call schema in this shell and get everything, or just go to OS query website and have that all the tables listed with all the info. So now it shows all the info it gets for the users, and then you can apply simple logic to it. Like show me those which have the UID under 100, so those are the most privileged users, the roots and the whatnot. And yeah. This is going to show the a basic config file for uh, for Hubble, just with the uncommented stuff. And as you see, you have uh, instructions on what you need to do. So it points to the git fs remote, so the git from where it's getting its data. This is the public one. And then how it's scheduled. So we have it scheduled, audit daily, run it every 24 hours, and then nebula 15 minutes. Uh, work in the game day, also the return of the use, 
And here is the internal configuration of all stack meters from local index index set. And then how the data is split into source type. So we don't pay to do that much info. And at the end, this is the, the Slack for notifications to be sent on Slack for file changes. Um, so now let's look at the data in Splunk. Uh, because here you can process it properly, so uh, we're going to see the compliance percentage. Uh, this is how it shows in Splunk, and then you're going to get a different line for each of those checks. So I have successful checks, uh, I have permissions enabled on Etsy password. Don't judge, this is the default Azure image, so it's not me. Uh, and uh, the name of the check, and what is it? So now let's go into the failed ones. And yeah, basically people can execute from that. And that's the big no no. That, that should be fixed. And also, SSH is not configured the best way I remember correctly. Yep. So, these things, um, this thing should be assessed in a, and acted upon in, in a normal environment. And let's look a bit at the Pulsar data. And we're not looking at it only in Splunk. I just want to wanted to show how fast the data goes through. So just created a BIM file. Hello guys. Don't judge I'm so type but <laughs> and then we're gonna switch to Splunk and see the changes there. So now this is running in real time and the file should file should pop in any minute now. So the first batch it comes with the swap files created by by Bing. Those are where it caches the files before you save it. If Bing crashes or if PC crashes or if computer crashes, you have the info. So here you have all the info you want to change the file, the user, the object path, the file hash, the create time and the modify time, the file name. So yeah. Now, we're going to look a bit at Nebula data, but we're not going to look at all of it. These are some of the queries, and I'm going to show um, some of the ones which I found interesting. This is the kernel info uh, query. It gets you the root device, root arguments, the file path of, of your kernel, your hash, whatever. I mean, this is good for detecting uh, stuff which tampers with your kernel and, and in Linux, and then we're going to look a bit at um, the login history. So this is pulled from uh, Utemp, if I remember correctly. Um, again, we're going to see the process ID and where, when it was played and when the user logged in, and which user it was, and we see a user process. So that's still active. Below it was a dead process, so when the session stopped. Let's look at more fun stuff. Run processes. These are more, more dynamic. So as you see here, these are pulled more often, not just daily because, yeah. Um, so again, we see the command line which was uh, the, which was ran. We have a bunch of arguments in there. Again, users, hashes, start times, whatever. Process IDs, parent process IDs which process it was, did you see like Python starting something without running a command line argument, uh, uh, a connection that's a bad thing, your Python was hijacked. And speaking of that, we're gonna also look at the query, the established outbound query. This is a nice one in my opinion. It looks at processes to establish a connection outbound to a different machine, not to the internet, but you can look for that with external IPs in there. This one actually connects outside of uh, my environment. It's uh, an Azure um, monitoring agent. Um, and again, we're seeing hashes, parent processes, parent process IDs, and basically you can see how we can correlate alerts based off of uh, this data. So what I did with this, I basically put all the info into one dashboard as in uh, let's assess a system quickly. So we're going to have the compliance percentage, version, uptime, kernel, network interface, local user accounts, the ones which are already in place, the logged in user, uh, cron jobs, running processes, processes and established connection, 
and all the, the other checks. So this would be a good starting point. Like if someone says, hey, this book was pop, just a bit in here, the old info, and that's a bit of a spoiler alert for, for later in, in the demo in a few minutes. So um, I'm going to be upfront. The Windows part is not as developed. It's because it was focused to, towards Linux and OS 20. But uh, this is what I get for my Windows host. Again, the normal stuff the summary with network interfaces. But you still get the running processes and process and established outbound connection, uh, ports, process IDs, whatever. You get the installed uh, programs here with uninstall string and install string. Also, the audit checks and uh, the file IDs. So the next host, which I'm going to pop in, uh, I actually tested a um, hostalization framework, open source. It's called Smoky Gap. It was open sourced by uh, Kevin Lustig at SaneCon. And basically what it does, it mimics uh, what, uh, what an attacker might do when he jumps on the box. So when an attacker dropped the key, which this dashboard caught, he uh, created some uh, rogue su uh, suit files and then created the user account, which uh, the resolution is not the best, but and he created a, a cron job for persistency. So basically, I, wasn't, I just did this and then popped that framework. It caught like half of the checks, like with what was uh, written in, in the beginning. So yeah, this was. My, my demo on Popple, 